astrologyaddiction.com and thank you so much for watching. Today's video is going to be on Aquarius rising and the houses. So if you'd like to keep uh, watching, I will be going through Aquarius uh, rising their, their relationships, their home life, their career, just really all aspects of their life. So please keep watching. And if you are interested in booking a reading with me, my link is in the description box. Uh, please like this video, subscribe to my channel, and leave a comment with your feedback below. Now, Aquarius rising people, these people come off um, in their first impression, of course, as people who are a little bit unstable. Maybe they're not someone that you can just pin down exactly, um, you know, oh, this person is like this, or this person is like this. They are more like complex. So you meet them and maybe they are, you know, a little more cheery, or maybe they are crabby that day, or maybe they're really chatty. It just depends, you know, it depends on what they have going on at the time. And uh, also you wanna see, you know, where their mercury is. So Aquarius rising people, they are people who are definitely unique. You know, of course, Aquarius people are always unique, individualistic, they follow their own path. So when you first meet these people, they are people who do not, you know, like to be controlled. They have their way of doing things and they're, it's a fixed sign, Aquarius is. So they have their way of doing th th things, they have their style of um, doing things and they want to stick to that. They also are very hardworking. So uh, since Saturn traditionally rules Aquarius, you usually see these people with, you know, lots of jobs. Maybe they work a couple of different jobs to keep themselves just busy and to keep uh, money in a good place. They are very, you know, concerned with security and also, you know, their freedom is important for them too. So they know that they're smart enough to realize that they can't have the freedom they want unless they have the financial security that they need. Now, Pisces in the second house, these people can definitely be interested in, in making money in a more you know, spiritual and unique way. They want to serve people to earn a living. So if they can do something where they are helping people, helping people with their mental health, with their physical health, or just in, in some way, you know, being able to help others, that's how they, you know, most likely will earn a living. These people can also sometimes sacrifice their income for other people. You see that a lot with Aquarius Rising is they may be people who give their money away to homeless people or to people in need, even to, you know, their parents or friends or people who just are a little bit, you know, not as well off as they are. This can also show maybe in the early home life there was some type of a lack there in some way. You know, maybe it wasn't necessarily financially, but there was something missing um, growing up in, in their life that they just didn't get to experience, um, you know, something that they wanted. Now the third house is Aries, so these people definitely have usually a fiery, passionate relationship with their siblings. If they have siblings, they might have a very close relationship with them, maybe a aggressive relationship, maybe they constantly are fighting, or there's just a high level of passion in that, you know, in that realm. These people are also, you know, quite passionate about their communities. They want to be involved in their neighborhood. Maybe they want to be a part of their neighborhood if there is some type of a community event happening. They don't really like to like be out of the know, you know, when there's something going on in their city or in their community, in their neighborhood, they want to know all of the details and they want to have a clear understanding of what's going on. And Aries, that shows just because Aries is ruled by the head, they are very intellectual. They want to intellectualize things that are happening around them. So again, in that neighborhood environment, even with siblings, they can intellectualize some of the fights and the misunderstandings that they go through. And it can even sometimes cause problems. Now Taurus on the fourth house, this shows that usually um, it, that's the IC, so that will definitely show where they have some family patterns, maybe things that have happened in their family life. But with Taurus there, it usually shows that they had some type of a you know luxury in the home life. Maybe there were benefits such as like living in a really nice house or having money in some way gifted to them. Maybe even they had to learn how to work really hard for money or for their family unit to be stable uh, because Taurus in the fourth house, fourth house shows that there is quite a stable united family unit but if there's any um, you know issues in that house any pain there any transits that are causing um, you know dilemma there can be a real need for this person to like dig their feet in and work really hard so maybe they had to learn how to work really hard from a young age this also shows that they find a lot of comfort security and happiness through their 
home life. So they will be someone who really enjoys being at home, taking care of a home, uh, taking care of their loved ones that live with them or anyone who's in their house. They, they really enjoy just being in their house and being comfortable. Now the fifth house is Gemini. So this shows that these people do have a real interest and curiosity towards children. They can really enjoy children. They can, um, you know, work with children. They can find children super interesting. It's like an area that they want to know more about, but sometimes it, it can also be a place where they are a little uncertain. You know, there's a curiosity there, but there is a, also a hesitation. So they may wait a little bit to have children. You just want to see, you know, where their Mercury is placed and what kind of transits it has or aspects to it. But they may really intellectualize having children. You know, they really think it through. They're like, is this a perfect time to have a child? Um, they, they certainly intellectualize that. But they're also super creative. The fifth house is your creativity, your hobbies, and with Mercury ruling it, they can have a really like unlimited amount of ideas and just thoughts that they want to implement. And sometimes it can take a little while for them to get going with that Taurus on the fourth house, you know, that I see there. But with the fifth house of Gemini, they are definitely curious and creative and someone who is innovative. So if they can implement all of those things into their hobbies, it's a great, you know, energy releasing space for them. Now the sixth house is Cancer. Cancer is, uh, you know, where we want to feel safe and secure. Sixth house is our health. It is our daily routine, our daily habits, our schedule. Sometimes these people can have a tendency to maybe gain weight. You know, Cancer on the sixth house uh, kind of enlarges that area. So sometimes they can have a tendency to be a little more, you know, have, have a little more fat than just the average like weight of, of, a, of someone. Not to be offensive at all, but they just have a tendency to even just fluctuate weight a little more easily than other people. Or to kind of be wishy-washy about their health routine. You know, maybe one week or one day they're very serious. The next day or week they are kind of taking it a little more easy and it just really depends on the moon because the moon is ruling cancer so whatever their moon is going through or that their moon is feeling that's how they're going to feel in the sixth house so they're if they're tired or depressed or exhausted they're not going to want to work out they're not going to want to have an organized schedule but if their moon is feeling energized and happy and you know, positive and not sad or anything, then they're much more likely to have a very healthy routine and schedule. Now the seventh house is Leo. So these people are definitely romantics. They see relationships and marriage as the ideal. They want to have a partner who they can care for, who they can be very romantic with. They they really crave like a high level of romance in their marriage partners and their um, really close relationships. And just depending on what's going on in the house, you know, if you have a malefic here like Mars or Saturn, there may be some um, issues that come from that. Maybe this person um, romanticizes like every relationship that they're in and until they learn about how not to do that. But they definitely, you know, romanticize their partnerships and it's a very important piece of their of their life. They need to be admired in their relationships. They need to um, have 100% loyalty in their friendships and their romantic relationships. And loyalty is just uh, such an important piece to their, um, their trust in relationships. Now Virgo on the eighth house, these people are very particular and, you know, critical and analytical about sharing money with other people or about um, merging money, about business opportunities, um, you know, even with their taxes and things like that, they can be very obsessive with it. You know, they might find it even fun to do like their taxes or to, um, you know, do a budget, things like that. They have a real inkling towards um, finance usually. I do put sex in the 8th house and the 5th house and since Mercury is ruling both of those places, they definitely need an intellectual rapport. They need to respect the person that they're with, they need to think that the person they're with is smart, that the person that they are, you know, having sex with is... There's just, there needs to be some kind of a mental rapport there, even a flirtation, they can like stories, they can like getting into those types of things. So that shows, you know, in both of these houses, the 5th and the 8th. Now their ninth house is Libra, so Venus rules Libra. Ninth house is higher education, it's long distance travel. So these people can certainly um, really very much enjoy uh, traveling long distances if it's comfortable for them. You know, Venus always wants to be comfortable. So these people are a little more, you know, they weigh the options. You know, is this trip going to be worth the money? Is this trip going to be comfortable? Is it gonna be fun? Is it gonna meet all of the 
the things that I needed to meet in my vacation. <laughs> um, so they're, you know, they look at it in that way. They're not really impulsive usually in vacations. They balance and they weigh the scale and they, you know, make their decision off of that. They also value higher education. So there's someone who really can um, find school and education very, very important. They can want to study for a long time. They can be extremely intellectual and smart, just depending on, you know, where that Venus is located. But they're usually quite quick-witted and intelligent since Libra is an air sign. Now, Scorpio um, and the 10th house, this shows that these people are definitely seen as being kind of scorpionic. You know, they're they're a little bit plutonic. They're obsessive. They're a little sexual. Publicly in the public image, people, you know, they either love them or they hate them. There's usually some type of something that they've done or an event that's happened publicly that shows people like, oh, okay, I'm on this person's side or I'm not. This is sort of like the the placement of someone who would get you know maybe canceled if there was a bad transit to it but then on the other end people love them you know there's uh scorpio people love or hate so when you have it on the midhaven um you know that intensity is there yeah uh, it does usually go well in the workforce your your employers usually think that you are reliable intense you know someone who can get the job done who doesn't need a lot of help or um babysitting scorpio is uh you know independent it's a um fixed sign so it's very you know can get the job done and very intellectual in that way now the 11th house is your house of friendships organizations and your wishes and dreams so sagittarius there these people have a great level of like uh, need for friendship you know they want to have a lot of friends they want to have friends um, of all different types of cultures they want to learn about different cultures they want to just have fun with their friends they want friends who are outgoing fun light-hearted you know people who dream big so that's the type of friendships that they usually find themselves in and even organizations that they might be a part of they can really help them grow in a way if they bring all of their talents and their gifts to these um, organizations that they are involved in they really like to nurture those things. They like to nurture their friendships and they like to kind of see that growth there. They also are like very um, particular with their ideals in friendship. You know, they want their friends to kind of think the same way that they do. They want their friends to not be, you know, very different from them. Sagittarius is sort of like, um, you know, dogmatic in that way. They want to be right. They want to tell you what you're doing wrong. So in their friendships, you know, they can find themselves a lot of times with um, people that are similar to them, people that have the same ideas and the same kind of like-mindedness. Now Capricorn in the 12th house, Capricorn is ruled by Saturn. So um, this can show that there is some pain and maybe some, uh, you know, difficulties that they deal with unconsciously, maybe some underlying depression that they go through. Um, Saturn is a malefic, so in the 12th, you know, ruling the 12th house, it can bring in some painful things regarding responsibility or money, insecurities. Uh, Capricorn is an earth sign, so these people can kind of sometimes even physically be a little bit upset with themselves, hard on themselves. And the 12th house is also imprisonment, so they can maybe have someone in their life or themselves even at some point um, dealing with people who are in prison or dealing um, with that situation themselves, just depending on you know how difficult that might be. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you would like to book a reading with me, my link is in the description box. If you have any questions, please leave them below. Have a good day. Thank you.